Hey guys, it's Jim Nix with Nomadic Pursuits and I've got another video for you today in my Making the Photograph series. This is a, a group of shots from Cathedral Rock in um, Sedona, Arizona. So let me take you through what I do to this photo and how I get there. And uh, as before, I'm using Aurora HDR Pro from Mac Fun, And uh, I love the product. It's super awesome. Super awesome. Okay, so here's your base HDR. I took three uh, frames, here you can see it, three images. I uh, started kind of dark, and that's something I do with a lot of my HDRs. Um, I do not always start, or, or excuse me, I don't always shoot them uh, with a centered set of brackets. In other words, I don't shoot negative two, zero, and plus two. I often find that plus two is just way too bright, and uh, I didn't want that. So I shot this, uh, I didn't have a filter, I shot it at F22. A late afternoon uh, so I could get a little bit of long exposure and uh, you know drag some of that uh, um, you know some of that water in the stream and so uh, anyway you can kind of see what I did there and so here's the base uh, base image I'm gonna start out by adding a preset and I'm gonna start out with this dark light which is kind of funny dark and light anyway uh, but I think it's a little too heavy at hundred percent so I'm gonna take that down to about fifty percent or so Let's, uh, let's just call it 50. I think that looks better. So let me show you where we started. It was like that. Dark light gives it a little bit of drama, which I like. And uh, that's, the, uh, that's the base image. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop a preset here. I'm gonna add Realistic Dreamy on top of this. So let me go get that preset. And that is in the Realistic HDR category here. It's over here to the right, there it is. So let me put that on there. And once again, I think it's too much at 100%. So I'm gonna drag that down. I'm gonna take that to like 20, you know, 25 or something. So, you know, there we go. Well, 24, how about that? I think that looks good. So let me show you what that did. It added a little bit of moodiness. It smooths out some things, adds a little um, uh, darkness around some of the uh, trees, that sort of thing. So there you go. And there it is. So I like that look. I'm gonna go ahead and now get another preset, and that's something I do on really all my images in Aurora, and that is I stack preset upon preset. And uh, while I experimented with this image before recording this video, uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing it, uh, you know, just here working on an image, I just experiment a lot, see what it is I like, see what kind of things come to me, and, and just sort of follow my creative muse. So let me, uh, I'm gonna go realistic detailed on this layer, so let me go get that. Um, realistic detailed where is it? here it is realistic and detailed and um, again it's gonna be pretty intense so I'm gonna drag that down a little bit there we go it's a little too detailed for my uh, my taste so I'm gonna pull that down into the let's say the 60 you know I don't know 62 let me show you the difference there it is before there it is after one of the things I, I do like is that it, it, if you look at the sky there it is before and after it adds a little bit of drama into the sky, which I like, but if you look at the water, I don't really like what it did there. There's the before, and there's the after. I like the water a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna actually just grab the, the brush and the eraser, and I'm gonna erase that from the water, because I like the water the way it was. So let me, let me paint over that. And that's the beauty of Aurora and having these brushes and these layers, is you can just add or remove a preset to any part of a layer, not just the entire layer, by just masking it in or out. And let me hit the mask button. There we go, I missed a little bit, so I'm glad I did that. Uh, let me just paint over all that, get rid of that stuff, and there we go. All right, let me turn that off. So let me show you, you can see sort of the mask, how it's uh, affected here. Uh, but there it is before, and there it is after. So the water didn't change, because I, I removed it there. So I like that. Um, now I'm gonna mess a little bit with the colors. So let me just call it colors. And I'm gonna go in here, and this is where I love split toning. It's called color toning in Aurora, but it's basically split toning. And it allows you, I, I use it on all my images. Uh, well, probably not all of them, but I use it on a bunch of them. I experiment, it, uh, experiment with it probably every time. Um, there are probably times when I don't decide to use it, but I love it. Um, it allows you to adjust the saturation levels and, and the colors basically in the highlights and the shadows separately. And these little boxes up here, if, uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos, I think I've talked about this before, but these are presets. So if you just click on one of these, it'll make the adjustments. Um, that's the, uh, the highlights and the shadows, right? So 
These are just presets, and as you click on these, you'll notice that the sliders change. But the one that I like in this uh, for this photo is this first one. Adds a little bit of a blue hue. Let me show you the difference. Uh, that's before, and that's after. So it added a little bit of blue to the water and the sky, which I like. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that, and then I'm gonna go into the color filter, and I'm gonna take a little bit of saturation out of the red. It's kind of a little bit red. Uh, while those rocks, this is in Sedona, Arizona. It's called Cathedral Rock. I think I mentioned that. Uh, but it's really red, but with HDR, a lot of the tones get exaggerated, and I want to take that down a little bit. I don't want it to be a, you know, a crazy red. And the same with the yellow, right? So I'm going to take that down a little bit, give it a little bit more natural look. I think that helps with the stones. And then the greens are really green, so I'm going to take that down a little bit as well. Um, I'm also going to change the luminance. That was the saturation levels. Uh, but I'm going to change the luminance a little bit. I think the red is fine, but I think if you take the yellow down a little bit and take the green down a little bit, uh, that'll help. Uh, there we go. So let me show you what this, uh, what our changes to this, uh, this so far have, uh, have affected this layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's before I did these color changes, and that's after. So I like that. I think that's looking a lot better. I'm going to actually go into this color section, though. Now I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to bump the saturation up a little bit, which I know slightly offsets what I just did. Uh, but I was I was working in the individual colors um, down here in the color filter, whereas here this is sort of a global adjustment. And then I'm going to take the temperature down, make a little bit bluer overall. Let's say an eight. And then here's the I love the tint slider. I use it all the time. I'm going to bump the tint up a little bit. Gives it a little bit more of a pinkish kind of purple hue. And I do that a lot with the temperature and tint. I'll just play them off of each other. And especially uh, when I'm using split toning, I think it uh, works really well. So let me show you once again. That's before this layer got started. You can see it had a lot more orange and yellow and kind of red tones. And that's after. Now it's it's got a lot more blue tones, a little calmer, a little less intense to my eyes. And so I like that a lot. I'm now going to add a vignette. So let me do that. I'll just title this vignette. I often title my layers based on whatever the adjustments are for that layer. It just helps me sort of keep things straight in my head. So let me go into vignette. And I'm going to say amount. I'm going to go to the left, and that'll uh, pull the vignette in. And the size, let me, uh, there we go, something like that. Let me show you what that has done to the photo before. After, you know, that's very subtle. I'm, I'm hardly even noticing it. So I'm going to do a little bit more. And the other thing I like, uh, especially uh, uh, here, is the inner light where you can drag that. And now I'm kind of brightening the center of the image while the vignette stuff darkened the, uh, the outer image, uh, the outer area of the image. So let me show you before, after. There's before, after. Certainly brightens up the center. And admittedly, that was the brightest part of the image when I took it anyway because, you know, you have the... Uh, the trees on either side and the bushes, and that sort of darkens that uh, those edges. So I like that. Uh, I think that looks good. I think the last thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of denoise. So let me do that real quick. Denoise. Um, and here we go. I think I'll do about 20 or so, and I'm just going to paint this into the sky. So, you know, there's 21. Let's call that a win. And, and I love to move the smooth slider as well. And then I'm going to grab the brush. All right, that's already highlighted. And brush and here we go let me just do that real quick and i'll do this kind of roughly uh just because this is a video uh, in real life i would probably go a little bit more detailed around the edges there but let me uh let me find that there we go and uh again the beauty of the brushes with uh with aurora is you can easily just erase something so it's a little too rough for me in a couple of spots I don't want to uh, get too much here off of the rocks because they, they look quite good. And uh, I got a little too close down in there and maybe over in there, right? So I'm just kind of cleaning up the edges a little bit just to keep from uh, smoothing out too much. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the video. There's the bef uh, before. There's the after. It's a little bit smoother. You may not be able to tell. But let me show you the big difference here in the, uh, this, uh, this image. There's the before. And there's the after. So we came quite a ways. Uh, the before, very flat, uh, really lacking in detail. 
and uh, any kind of drama. It's very, um, well, flat is probably the best word for it. And that's okay. I actually like my base HDRs to be flat. That's how I prefer to have them start. And so we started with that flat image, and then with these various layers, we're able to bring it to life. If you remember, we started out with a preset dark light on the original uh, base layer, another preset, realistic dreamy, and then a third preset of realistic and detailed. All three of those presets, I changed the opacity. While it defaults to 100%, I took it down in each case because it was a little too intense. And then when you start stacking presets, you wanna make sure you can control that and, and end up with the look of the photo that you want. Uh, we added a layer for colors. That's where we did some split toning and some saturation adjustments. And then we did vignette and denoise on the last couple of layers. And that's the final image. So one more time, there's the beginning and there's the end. So that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate you following along and I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Thanks.